Hello everyone, thank you for taking the time to look at this video. My name is Gianmarco Radice and I am the Program Director for Singapore Institute of Technology for the Aerospace Engineering Program jointly offered with the University of Glasgow. Together with my counterpart from the University of Glasgow, Dr. Henrik Hess, we will provide you with an overview of this degree program. This is a three years degree program jointly offered by the University of Glasgow and Singapore Institute of Technology. It is run out of the SIT building inside the Niang Polytechnic campus where most of the classes, lectures and labs are going to be held. This degree program is specifically structured to meet the unique aviation landscape requirements of Singapore. Graduates from this degree program will be able to study and understand the behavior of fixed wing and rotary aerial vehicles. They will be able to predict their performance, analyze its dynamical behavior, be familiar with their onboard avionic systems and perform structural and aerodynamic analysis. Practical project work in the area of unmanned aerial systems will also allow the students to apply the knowledge learned in the classroom in the context of a practical application. This unique three years degree program will help students develop a solid foundation in aerospace engineering through a curriculum that merges fundamental engineering knowledge with specialized topics in unmanned systems. The program has a strong industry focus, not only limited to unmanned system applications, but also covering a wide range of other aerospace applications. Students will develop relevant industry skills and experience during an eight-month integrated work-study program through collaborations with our industrial partners in the broad aerospace engineering sector. The degree provides further opportunities for students to experience the aerospace sector in the UK during their three weeks overseas immersion program in Glasgow during the summer. With this industrial experience, technical expertise and transferable skills such as oral and written communication, teamwork, analytical abilities and time management, our graduates will have a sound basis for employment in the aerospace industry. A key feature of this degree program is the integrated work-study program. The duration of the IWSP is eight months and the students will develop technical competencies which will lead to professional advancement. You will also have the opportunity to develop professional networks and interpersonal skills. The real work that you will undertake during your IWSP will enable you to understand the challenges faced in the current fast-changing economy and develop skills of adaptability, creativity and innovation while adding value to the workplace. IWSP also has the potential to lead to full-time employment opportunities upon graduation. As you can see here, these are some of the companies that are going to collaborate with us and provide opportunities for our students during the IWSP. You can see that these companies range from large multinational companies such as Rolls-Royce, ST Engineering, Airbus, Boeing and Thales, as well as small and medium enterprises located in Singapore. The degree program is structured in such a way that alongside the technical abilities and foundational knowledge, we develop transferable skills such as report writing, oral presentations, team working and time management. The curriculum merges theoretical knowledge learnt in lectures with practical hands-on applications during labs and tutorial sessions throughout the three years of the degree program. Finally, as mentioned, the Overseas Immersion Program provides an, an opportunity for international exposure to both professional working as well as um, life experiences. You can see here the degree program structured across the three years and 
Each academic year is divided into three trimesters. So you can see here the structure of each year and the corresponding modules that you will be taking in each of the trimesters. As you can see, in year one, we lay down the foundations by developing your knowledge in maths, physics, programming, and uh, electronics. In year two, we start developing the aerospace engineering topics, introducing aerodynamics, structural analysis, flight mechanics and flight control, uh, flight dynamics, and um, aircraft propulsion. At the end of year two, you will be spending three weeks in Glasgow for the Overseas Immersion Program. Once you come back from Glasgow, you're ready to start your IWSP, which starts in September and ends at the end of April. You will then come back to complete the last trimester of studies before successfully graduating. Throughout the program, we are developing a UAV theme that is embedded in both courses as well as group project. And this spans across the three years and is the application domain in which the students will have the opportunity to develop what they are learning in class. Here you can see an example of a UAV project that was done by a group of students last year to develop a drone that could collect water in sewers. The sampling system uses a compact, lightweight and strong motor capable of drawing water into the system. The water drawn is stored into the water tank with the capacity up to 30 milliliters of water. A redundant system was designed to allow trapped air and excess water collected to be disposed out of the system when the tank is full. The water sampling system is also capable of collecting waters in shallow depths making it versatile to collect samples even if the sewage water level is shallow. The drone uses RP LIDAR to generate a 3D map of the environment using laser sensors, making it suitable for low light conditions. Hector Slam is capable of generating an accurate 2D mapping and it can capture even the most distinct feature of an environment. When the LiDAR is operating, it is constantly updating the 3D map in real time, providing users a visual understanding of the environment out of their sight. Our students don't only do drone-related projects. Here you can see an example of an experimental aerodynamic project. The Sierpinski tetrahedron is a triangular pyramid that is often used in airports to indicate the wind direction for pilots that are landing. In this particular case, the idea was to use this unique geometrical structure as a windbreak.
I will now pass you on to my colleague, Dr. Henrik Hess, who will give you an overview of the OIP experience and the University of Glasgow. Thank you, John Michael. Uh, I'm Henrik Hesse, Program Director for Aerospace Engineering from Glasgow side, and I want to give you an overview of what the Glasgow experience will look like as part of the Overseas Immersion Program. The building that you see in the background is a flagship building uh, for the University of Glasgow, and if you Google Glasgow, that's in all the pictures that you see. Uh, the university really is as old as the building looks like. So the university was established in 1451, and over this nearly 600 years of experience, um, we've established a strong research background and graduated many students. If you join the program, you will be part of this tradition and part of a very vibrant student culture. Uh, we have nearly 30,000 students based in Glasgow uh, from almost uh, 140 countries. And as you already know, we're not just based in Glasgow, tucked away uh, on a small campus next to the city centre, but we have representations as well in Singapore as well as uh, different locations in China. So the international focus is really at our heart, and that's something that you will gain as part of the programme. Because imagine if you become an engineer after you graduate and you work for companies, not just international companies in Singapore and aerospace, um, you will work with international clients. So this is something that employers look for, um, and we definitely have this international exposure. The School of Engineering is actually tucked away just behind this flagship building. Uh, so imagine almost 2,000 students um, you know, walking in and out of this building, and of course the academics uh, supporting the students and teaching and doing their research. Um, so as we go over to Glasgow, you will experience walking in and out of this building uh, almost every day. And just imagine uh, all this wobbly, creaky walls, right, as part of uh, we're teaching you. Uh, your courses. I, I'm glad that Glasgow has also invested in a new campus development which is just uh, located next to our old buildings and as part of your experience going over to Glasgow you will actually be able to use those facilities as well. The infrastructure is much closer to what we know from, from Singapore and we have state-of-the-art facilities for project work uh, and group learning. On the right-hand side you actually see a picture of our um, wind tunnel. It's a unique wind tunnel in the world and um, it's the centerpiece for the aerospace division, uh, which very much focuses on aerodynamic research and unmanned systems in Glasgow. So that nicely balances what we teach you here in Singapore. And as part of your experience going over to Glasgow, you will be able to uh, see this facility. So I can't promise that you will stand inside the wind tunnel for uh, health and safety reasons, uh, but we do run projects and you will be able to use these, uh, this wind tunnel, uh, for example, putting models inside and taking measurements as part of your projects. Uh, Glasgow experience is not just the university, the city life, but it has a beautiful countryside which you can experience in Scotland. Uh, so this picture is actually just uh, something you can experience one hour outside Glasgow and it's something that our students like a lot. So you imagine basically on weekends, you can experience everything that Scotland has to offer, but the Overseas Immersion Program for the three weeks that you spend in Glasgow is not just about fun. It's actually um, an intensive, it's a credit-bearing course, uh, so it's compulsory, and the idea is that we go over there for you to learn and get an exposure of the aerospace sector in the UK and Europe. Again, this counterbalances what we teach you over here um, in Singapore to teach you the aerospace background. As part of your uh, overseas immersion program in Glasgow, uh, you get to work in groups on a design project where you actually get to design a real aircraft configuration uh, which you can test in our wind tunnel facilities and compare the data against um, actual flight test data uh, shared by the university. All this will be led by my colleagues over in Glasgow, which gives you the real uh, UK experience. So this is something that we do from uh, Monday to Thursday, lots of hard work. And then on Fridays, uh, we have trips planned uh, to give our students the exposure of the aerospace sector in the UK. So as an example, you see a picture on the left uh, where our students visited the Museum of Flight. And it's a unique experience for students to see an actual Concorde aircraft. There are not many of these places around in the world anymore, and it's a hands-on experience for our students they very much enjoy. Uh, then on weekends, we're actually free to explore anything that Scotland has to offer, and many of our students um, rent cars or uh, book organized trips uh, to see the countryside or go to other places in Scotland, UK, or Europe. I'll we'll talk about this more later as well. Uh, the Overseas Immersion is not just a technical program, but I think it's equally important that our students get the cultural immersion. Uh, 
Uh, so here you see several uh, pictures of what our students have experienced, and it's really up to you what you're into. Uh, so if you're into shopping, of course, Glasgow is a big city and can offer this as well. But there's more to offer as well in terms of cultural programs. And if you're into Harry Potter, there are many fairy tale castles that you can see. But I think the most important one is the picture on the bottom right. Uh, you see our students um, live in the university accommodation. So you have single rooms, but the kitchen is shared. And it's probably one of the first times in your life where you get to experience cooking for yourself. Uh, it's actually a fun part. Our students uh, cook together, um, they enjoy their food, and actually most of the time also invite their lecturers to experience their cooking. So it helps you grow as uh, you know, personalities and mature as part of your program, which again I think is really important once you graduate and then you enter your working life. And not to forget the picture on the top right, uh, it's a football club in, in Glasgow, so I'm sure there are many football fanatics around you. Um, so it's the opportunity to actually go and see your favorite football clubs. Uh, Glasgow is not far away from Liverpool or Manchester at all either. Um, I don't think over the summer you will get to see many games, but you can visit the stadiums as well. So this is where Glasgow is actually uh, located. If many of you don't know, it's uh, tucked away in the north of Europe, uh, very much in the north of the UK, actually. It's a very vibrant city. I didn't know it's the third largest city in the UK, so I believe there must be London, Birmingham, and then uh, Glasgow. And it was voted by Time Out as the friendliest place in the UK as well. And for sure, once you go over to Glasgow, you can experience this yourself. It's very common that people just approach you and talk to you in the streets or in the pub or at the university. Uh, it's something that you will enjoy when you experience Glasgow. Um, it's about the people, but it's also about music and culture in Glasgow. So I already mentioned the university campus is tucked away a bit from the city center. Uh, it's a very vibrant area full of students that you can enjoy, but equally you can go to the city center and enjoy uh, more than 700 uh, music places. So it's not just nightclubs, but actually places for bands to play. And Glasgow is UN UNESCO city of music as well. Um, similar to Singapore, it actually is a very green place. Uh, in addition, though, as I've mentioned, you can actually go outside uh, Glasgow to enjoy this countryside. So even if you're not into nature, uh, having seen this is a unique experience. And this is something, as I mentioned, what our students typically do over the weekend, and it really makes this uh, experience special. So you can go and drive around this countryside, or if you want to um, experience the rest of Europe, you can actually board a flight and come to my hometown, Berlin, in Germany. So this three weeks experience, if you have some time, you can actually add some more weeks afterwards uh, to experience the rest of Europe, is really unique and makes this special. And as I think it's important for you to grow as individuals um, and have this international exposure, which you then take to your workplace after you graduate. The other things that we add to this experience is back in Singapore is actually working in your extra activities. So this is not part of the university curriculum, but we look for these opportunities, and that's something that's up to you to drive these activities. So as an example, we encourage our students to join competitions, and I've shown here one picture of a group of guys that I actually took to South Korea. Uh, this was as part of a, a personal air vehicle competition where the guys developed a air taxi. So this is a prototype system that can drive and fly as well. And they actually went over to demonstrate this in front of international judges and compete against uh, other international teams. So this is a unique experience again for these um, students to apply engineering live in practice. And if we look one year later after they've graduated, uh, some of these guys are actually um, the engineers that worked towards the first Singapore's air taxi. So this is the prototype system shown at um, last Singapore's air show. And I was proud to see that after one year, they managed to exhibit their prototype system at last Singapore's air show. Uh, so this photo shows the guys in the background developing the system, and the girl sitting in the cockpit uh, didn't actually develop the system, but is a very good example of uh, companies where our graduates can go to. So she's actually working for Applied Materials, which is not in the aerospace sector, it's a semicon uh, company and shows you that once you go through our program, um, you actually have a versatile background. So you're not limited to only aerospace engineering, but you can work in all other engineering companies uh, in this Singapore. Why should you then join an aerospace program in the first place? Right? So actually, that's a good question, and it's something that I think is important. Um, so you're not limited to working in the aerospace sector afterwards, but engineering is a very uh, difficult program to go through. 
So if you have a passion about aerospace, I think it's something that's important that keeps you going throughout the three years uh, of the program. So you master all the engineering skills, and then afterwards you can decide uh, which sector you want to go to. To get this insights, of course, we organize lots of company visits, uh, mostly focusing on aerospace companies, but we also visit other companies, and this is led by the SIT Center for Career Readiness. So you have a lot of exposure going to different com companies, and you know exactly what to expect after you graduate and plan your career after your studies. One flagship event that we're proud of is the Singapore Air Show that we actually get to participate in every year as well. So you see this picture here is us uh, next to all the big players in aerospace uh, this year at the air show. And it's a special moment for our students where they get to actually exhibit their prototype systems that they have developed throughout their projects. So you see here again the example of the flying car, but also a um, drone that can take off vertically and land vertically as well. So the students here can use this opportunity, uh, of course, to uh, you know, present their work, but also to network with all the other aerospace players in Singapore and the world. And it's a very unique experience. So with all these extra activities, I think it makes our graduates uh, really special engineers after they go through the program, which really prepares them for a career in aerospace. So with this, I would like to thank you. Uh, I hope you had a good overview of what the Glasgow experience looks like. And now I'm glad to pass over to Jamaco again uh, to talk about some more technical details of the program. Thanks to Henrik. I am now sure that you are all super excited at the prospect of spending a few weeks in Glasgow and experiencing everything it has to offer. To summarize, this degree program is specifically set up to meet the requirements of the Singapore aviation industry. This degree program is emphasized by a highly integrated approach which merges classroom learning with practical hands-on applications. Students will receive foundational education in aerospace engineering and develop the versatility to deal with novel and unusual problems. To conclude, Graduates from this program are innovative individuals who can apply their technical and practical knowledge in the development of novel approaches and solutions to UAVs and aerospace problems. Before concluding, I will go through a couple of operational matters. Students are allowed to apply for credit exemption for year one modules at a maximum of three per trimester. You can see here in trimester one, you can apply for exemption for engineering maths one, fundamentals of programming and fundamentals of electronics and circuits. While in trimester two, you can apply for exemption for engineering maths two, effective communication skills and fluid mechanics. The requirements are that you have at least 90% match in content and intended learning outcomes from your polytechnic courses, that you achieved the minimum grade of A or whatever the maximum grade in your polytechnic is and this has been achieved no more than five years prior. You can apply now online through SIT's portal and candidates who meet the admission requirements will be invited for interview from February onwards. Additional information can be found by scanning the QR code or clicking on the link at the bottom of the page. Thank you very much for listening in. I hope you found this presentation interesting and I am looking forward to meeting many of you at the interview stages in the upcoming weeks. Thank you and goodbye.